Hello everyone, RGP Fox here, and I wanted to discuss Faruzan and some new characters that will be coming out, as well as previous units that have been released that just seem oddly similar that we've seen in previous patches. The characters I will be discussing will be units like Tignari, Faruzan, and the upcoming character, Al Haitham. Before I continue, if you guys like this video, please subscribe to my channel. I've recently hit 47 subscribers and that's honestly a big milestone for me, so thanks and I hope to reach 100 soon. Let's get on with the video. When discussing these units, you look at their kits and notice that while a lot of them have niches and certain changes with their kits designs, it still strikes you as being oddly similar to previous units that we've received before. Tignati has a charge shot mechanic much like Ganyu's and honestly, if you saw his character trailer, it was almost the same trailer that Ganyu had falling asleep, dreaming about fighting some monsters, and then waking up only to find themselves actually in danger. I gotta hand it to Mahoyo though. The other Sumeru characters that we've received have been amazing, and honestly, my favorites so far are Dorys and Sinnohs, and I guess Wanderers. So it's clear that Hoyoverse can dish out new things and make them original, but when it comes to characters' designs kit-wise, are they falling out and having to rehash some of their old units? After all, Dory was a new Electro Healer that we received just after getting Kuki. Faruzan is like Kujo Sara in that she provides a buff to a certain element, and her C6 is almost a carbon copy of it with some extra effects. Then we have Al Haitham. I don't want to go deep into leaked territory as I know some players for one don't want to get spoiled, and I won't add video clips since I definitely do not want to get hit with a copyright strike notice. If you're looking to avoid it, skip to the chapter after this one. You've been warned. Al Haitham's kit has been leaked very early, and it's crazy to see that, despite being everything I've wanted, the man's is almost a carbon copy of Kaching. The elemental skill shooting him towards a certain distance is without a doubt much like her elemental skill, and the elemental infusion he has does work differently in that it cannot be overridden, which is an improvement for sure, but nevertheless, much alike. Then we get to the elemental burst, and yeah. I think I've said enough. Realistically, I don't think Mahoyo has run out of ideas. I mean, we have Nahida's kit and Wanderer's kit to look at that shows that they can and will make very creative characters. I love the creativity that comes out of the company when they really try, and I also have enjoyed the TCG that has come out with the 3.3 patch. I believe that Mahoyo will keep reusing old character designs and kits with future characters that release, and I hope that it won't be as often as it has been recently. I get that creativity will be far and few in between, but at some point, it does become repetitive and it can bore people out of playing this game. Honestly, as much as I criticize this aspect of them, I can't help but still be hyped when I see the new character get released as the excitement of having another unit to play with fills me with joy. Perhaps this is what happens when the company sees success with something they've created. Can I be upset? Sure. But will I stay upset? Odds are, no. I do continue to love this game and play it every day as someone who's played it consistently for almost a year and a half. I'm surprised though, because I haven't gotten tired of it. It's not like I don't have anything else to play. I play Overwatch, Yu-Gi-Oh, Street Fighter amongst many other fighting games, and to this day, I still find Genshin to be the game I look forward to play to every day. I do feel for Mtash though. I know he's been tired of this game every day repeating the same old steps as before, and when or if I get there, I hope I don't burn out as much as he does. I wish that there was more to the game that could be implemented such as permanent events, a survival mode to reward me for building healers for one, and a resin farming system to be able to access more of it whenever I feel like farming for a whole day or more. When the interview came out that had them speaking about combat not being a big focus to them, I do find that hard to believe when almost every event they dish out is either combat related or has some combat implemented to it. Perhaps that's just my own personal gripe, but I would love to keep my goal of building every character so I could feel a sense of accomplishment. I mean, come on now, <laughs> they give it to us so why wouldn't I, right? Well, except for Alloy. I don't think, uh, I don't think I'm gonna ever build Alloy. Well, there you have it, guys. 
I kind of went off on a hinge at the end, but that's just the gist of how I feel about the current state of the game. If you have anything you'd like to share, start a conversation in the comments below. I know I haven't posted in a while, but I have honestly been enjoying my time off of school as my finals were last week and I've been basking in the warmth of relaxation. I just wanted to put out a short video out there just so I keep remembering to actually make content, but for sure the next video will be longer. And of course, sooner or later I must speak about Raiden as, I mean, who doesn't want to have Raiden in their team roster, so I'll be making a video about how worth it would be to pull for her at this current state. But, um, you know, just to make it a little bit short, very worth. Anyways, with that being said, I am RGB Fox, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope that you have a very good day. Also, if you're currently pulling for the Wanderer, I wish you the best of luck. Peace.